more on YouTube. I'm just thinking about zombies and consciousness. I suppose I'm particularly thinking about those machines that they've installed in Whitby up in Yorkshire on the Yorkshire coast where you can put a coin in the slot. Where you, you know, they like photo booths, you know, when you go and sit down, you put a coin in the slot and uh, there's, I don't know, something above your head, but it turns off your consciousness, just kind of switches it off. Uh, I think they're pretty controversial, but. Uh, and there's nothing visible from the outside, it just kind of renders you into a zombie. But when you come out, you don't look any different. You know, anybody who's in your life, you know, your boyfriend, your girlfriend, your husband, your wife, your friends, your family, your children, everybody will look at you exactly the same. But there's no light inside, you have no internal experience, you've just turned into a zombie. And in fact, if someone asks you, did you go into that machine and become a zombie? You'll say, no, I didn't. Or you'll say, yeah, I did, but it doesn't work, it's a big scam. You know, you'll say things like that. But in actual fact, it isn't a scam, it, it, does, it does work, it just turns off your consciousness, but leaves every other kind of uh, faculty that you have, all your perceptions. All the engagements that you have with the world are all in place, the memories are all in place. But as I say, you just don't have this self-reflexive light inside you. Which is fascinating really, it's an, and it's an interesting thing to be able to do. I might go up there one day and try it. But I've been thinking about that. Would, is, if, you, if you had that done, or if I had that done, how long would that remain in place? I mean, is it permanent? Or does consciousness creep back in after a while? I suspect it might, and of course you'd never know because the people you talk to about it always say, no, no, I've got an internal life, even when they haven't. So there's no real way, there's no consciousness meter to, to you can turn on to gauge that. You have to just go off personal reports. So, I don't know. Because I'll th tell you what I th why I'm thinking this, is because, and it's to do with other people really. You know, because when I look at other people, um, I, particularly when I've known them for a while, I, I kind of get to know them, you know. It's not my consciousness that's doing that, it's just a le some learning processes inside my brain. Get to, to interpret their behaviour. So the more I know someone, the more I can predict what they're likely to do in a certain situation. What their choices will be. How they'll feel about a certain issue. What their um, emotional responses will be to something I say. What their answers will be to any questions that I ask. Um, you know, even, even things like, you know, likely complaints they may have, or, um, you know, just you name it, what music they'll like. And occasionally I'm taken by surprise, but generally, once you get to know a person really well, you can usually make broad generalisations about them, can't you? It, it, you know them, you know, you've got, you've got to know them, that's what's happened. You've internalised a model of that person, almost like a little avatar inside your head, running around, and that you can run simulations with, you know, so if I know somebody really well, I can um, imaginatively place them in situations, and run that simulation and, and see what they will do. And sometimes I might be wrong, but quite a lot of the time I think I'd probably be right. I imagine that person going into a cafe and trying to decide what they would have and whether they have sugar in their tea or not and you know, I can usually guess how they'll respond. So given that we do that, when I say we do that, it's not my consciousness doing that, that's just my brain doing that. Given that my brain is capable of doing that with other people, it probably does it with myself. You know, so if I was to have this, um, it's called a kissing gear, I'm going through here. If I was to have this little uh, treatment done in Whitby and have my consciousness turned off, but all the rest of my brain faculties in place, would my brain start to run that kind of process on the body that that brain is part of? Would my brain interpret my behaviour, look at its look at its own memories, look at the memories it contains, observe the, pa the familiar patterns, the regularities in those behaviours, be able to run predictions about itself, about that body? be able to uh, place this body, this Fred body in various situations and simulate its likely responses. In other words, to create an avatar of itself, if the brain was able to do that. And once it's done that, once that avatar, because it'd be a even much richer avatar even than the ones that I am creating of other people, 
because they have access to all those internal stuff as well, all the proprioceptive and the biochemical information would always be there. If we was able to do that and create this really, really rich, richly rendered avatar, then would that be just consciousness returning? Is that how it would be? I would say, I, but instead of this zombie pointing to itself and saying, I, in just an empty gesture with no light at the end of that pointing, the I that it pointed to would be this fully rendered experiential centre, this avatar that runs in the wood. Yeah. Yeah, the lights would be on, but there would be someone at home eventually in that particular location in the cosmos. I don't know, maybe. I'll maybe try it sometime and let you know. Anyhow, this is today. It's not as sunny as it has been. But not unpleasant. <laughs>